So, funny story. <laughs> You're going to love this. So I sit down and decide it'll be a good idea to record a good few hours of Skies of Arcadia footage. Because, you know, I've got a bit of free time. And then, you know, why not? Get ahead of the curve. And yeah, so I sit down, I start recording the footage, and find that, for whatever reason, Fraps didn't pick up my microphone. So I got two hours of Skies of Arcadia footage that now I have to record a voiceover for. Isn't that just great? Ah. Well, I think not quite two hours. I think I cut a couple of them short. So yeah, in this first episode here, uh, we've just arrived in Lower Valua. I made a great joke about tourist industry, but after that explanation, it seems trite to repeat it. So yeah, uh, I'm running around, just trying to grab a few items, see what there is to explore. I actually got a little bit lost, and had some frustration with the camera in these tight alleys as well. And it's actually just occurred to me that this first episode I recorded is only 15 minutes. Hmm. Oh well. It's a short one. Anyway, meet this annoying little brat. He'll crop up a few times uh, through this these next few episodes. A cheeky wee shite. I mean, is it me or is he wearing tomatoes on his chest? I think it might just be me. I don't know. I mean, to be honest, I really think that Vice and Aika should have kicked this guy's ass. and confused around here. I forgot that there's a second section of the town that I have to go to to get to the inn. That's not the inn. That's someone's house, believe it or not. Yeah. People in Lower Valua, they, they live fantastic lives, it seems. I gotta take a little look at the shops here. You'll notice that they use the same uh, character model for the shops as they do in uh, Sailor's Island. Didn't have much gold, but I thought I would uh, buy a couple of things just to make sure. I'm assuming that stuff in Valua is really expensive because I've just given her a lot of gold. Not able to afford anything here. Don't have anything to sell either. Holding on to that in case someone needs it later on. I think because in the GameCube version, one of the things they changed was the encounter rate for random battles. I don't think I've got quite as much money at this stage as I would do on a run on the Dreamcast version. But the encounter rate was uh, one of only a couple of complaints people had about the game. Like it was just a little too easy to come across things. First I thought this was the inn, but it's just a tavern. We hear about the execution that's going to happen. because I thought the commentary that I did in these episodes was kind of good originally. 
and I end up here. Time to do it all over again. I can't even remember half the stuff I said. It's really infuriating. But oh well. So yeah, now I'm in the lower, lower sec, lower, lower velour, and decided to have a quick explore. I've got my bearings now. I know where the inn is, so just running around seeing if there's any items to pick up. And noting that everything is once again connected by big ladders. And the camera is once again getting on my tits. I think it's one of those things you can't really level a complaint at the game about because you know this came out in 2000 originally and the that was the Dreamcast version and yeah you know you'd had 3D games you'd had a lot of first person shooters and things like that but having to separately control a camera like this in 3D space was still something a lot of games were getting their head around even now it's not perfect you know a lot of games are quite terrible for it and they're not quite this bad But, you know, certainly early Dreamcast era games had terrible cameras. Uh, Sonic Adventure, another notable, really terrible one. It was one of the worst cameras in a game I've ever seen. Not so bad in the stages, but in the actual adventure fields, just nigh on useless. having a bit of trouble sometimes getting it to register when I'm standing in the right place to interact with things. You see, that always confused me. I mean, obviously Valua goes through a lot of steel. Like just about everything in this place is made out of metal. And they're incredibly technologically advanced. So, if the steel mill area is around here, then why is there so little money? It's really strange. I don't quite get it. Yeah, just making sure there are no other items sitting around. And oh, my beloved save points. You notice as well that because the ceiling's cut off, you can now see the background. Good old early Dreamcast rendering. Yeah, I will just make Drachma pay for the room. Because why not? Big enough and ugly enough to pay for it himself. I think it's kind of strange actually getting used to the time scales that happen because it doesn't take us long to get from Pirate Isle to Sailor's Isle, escort the guy back to Nazir and then come here. But at the same time, clearly quite a few days have passed in the game. So, you know, obviously the time scales are out a little bit. And it's always something that's a bit difficult to get your head around. I don't think games do a very good job of conveying how long certain things take. Even games where there's a regular, I must go to sleep here and now thing. Like even in Skyrim, you know, we have to sleep often. Or even in Oblivion where that's where you went to level up. Because you had to go to bed to level up. And it did a really bad job of conveying just how long things take. I mean, maybe that's just how we play with how we play games, you know, because we tend to marathon them sometimes and we get so much done in such a small space of time. I can't think of any game that really 
really been good with the passage of time. Yeah. So yeah, we are all of the uh, all of the opinion that sneaking into the Coliseum is probably a much better idea than trying huh? to uh, storm the place now. And someone's been spying on us. Who could it be? It's that brat. Um, watch this. Ake is really strong. Yep. I mean, that should be an Olympic thing. Those two. And Vice shows himself to be quite spry. I think that tone plays when you pick the best route to take, and if you can cut them off, you get an item. And then you just have to follow them. Nothing wrong with a little random action sequence, eh? And why can't I do that to get down ladders instead of having to climb down them all the time? Yoink. And you said to put me down. I was merely obliging. Cutting to the bone there, Marco. And Drachma doesn't mess around. Alright, okay. You're gonna snitch? We kill your ass. And I was like, what? what? No, you won't. Bit of an overreaction there, don't you think, Captain? <laughs> He's really not backing down from this, even with all the melodrama. Not sure what's up with Ika's facial expression there. Doesn't scream to me going, hey, calm down. Ah, well, now we find our way in. Mar Marco, of course, disapproves of our plan. He thinks it's hilarious. Now it's Vice's turn to cut him to the bone. He's getting smart, this vice, you know. Not rushing into things. And vice, always thinking of the people. He's deadly serious, mate.
once again, fiddling with the camera. It'd be nice if I could just leap down like I did the night before. Oh yeah. I'll see you next time, folks.